भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरंचम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जा मुदीर नश्चप्राएद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैशिकी श्रीमद्भागवत की so today i decided that um, we'll speak from a verse from shrimad bhagavatam canto 7 chapter 1 title the supreme lord is equal to everyone kama dveshat bhayat snehat yatha bhakteshvare mana अवेश्यातहम बहावस्तगति गमाद्वेशा भयाचनेहा भक्तेश्वरे मना अवेश्यातहम बहावस्तगति गेहा भक्तेश्वरे मना अवेश्यातहम बहावस्तगति गेशाचनेहाक्तेश्वरे मना आवेशातहम बहावस्तगति गमाद्वेशा भयाचनेहा भक्तेश्वरे मना आवेशातहम बहवस्तगति गो एनी बड़ी फ्रॉम माता जीस नो ओके रीडिंग द ट्रांसलेशन मेनी मेनी पर्सन्स हैव अटेन लिब्रेशन सिंपली बाय थिंकिंग ऑफ कृष्णा विद ग्रेट अटेंशन एंड गिविंग अप सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज this great attention may be due to lusty desires inimical feelings fear affection or devotional service i shall now explain how one receives krishna's mercy simply by concentrating one's mind upon him parpad by his divine grace is bhakti vedanta swami shri prabhupada shri prabhupada ki jai as stated in shrimad bhagavatam if a bona fide hears of krishna's pastimes with the gopis which seems to be lusty affairs the lusty desires in his heart which constitute the heart disease of the conditioned soul will be vanquished and he will become a most exalted devotee of the lord 
If one hears of the gopi's lusty behavior with Krishna, becomes free from lusty desires. Certainly, the gopis who approach Krishna become free from all such desires. Similarly, Shishupal and the others who were very much envious of Krishna and who constantly thought of Krishna became free from envy. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda were fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness because of affection. When the mind is somehow or other fully absorbed in Krishna, the material part is very soon vanquished and the spiritual part, attraction to Krishna, becomes manifest. This indirectly confirms that if one thinks of Krishna enviously, enviously or simply because of thinking of Krishna, he becomes free from all sinful reactions and thus becomes a pure devotee. Examples of this are given in the following verse. Many, many persons have attained liberation simply by thinking of Krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities. This great attention may be due to lusty desires, inimical feelings, fear, affection or devotional service. I shall now explain how one receives Krishna's mercy simply by concentrating one's mind upon him. So I'm giving a background of this sloka, how this sloka has come here. So in the sixth canto of Bhagavatam, we see that there is description of how Indra tries to kill the embryo inside the womb of mother Diti. And he cuts the embryo into <clears throat> seven pieces. And then each of the seven pieces, he once again cuts them into another seven pieces. And that's how the Maruts are born. And then there is also a discussion of how Diti is so upset with Krishna because she feels that Lord Vishnu or Krishna is partial to the demigods. He is not helping the demons. So she's all upset and that is what she's telling to Kashyap Muni and she's requesting that I want that um, virtuous son of me should be born who will kill Indra. So when all these things are going on, the, when the seventh canto starts, after Sukhdev Goswami explains about the Pumsavan Vrata, how Diti can do a Vrata which will purify her and which will help her to get a son who is virtuous of killing Indra. And when the seventh canto begins, the first chapter, first sloka begins with a question by Parikshit Maharaj. Where Parikshit Maharaj is asking Sukhdev Goswami that how come the Supreme Lord is partial to the demigods? How can he be partial? He is the Supreme Lord, right? Suppose, I'll, I'll let me make it simple. In a class, a teacher is not supposed to be partial to anybody, right? She is supposed to be equal to everybody. So Parikshit Maharaj is asking that how come the Lord is partial? He is always favoring the devtas. Why he is not favoring the demons? And when he asks this question, then Sukhdev Goswami tells a big story. Now there is a story inside a story inside a story, so you have to hear it carefully. So then Sukhdev Goswami begins this story and he said, you know, a similar question was asked by Yudhishthir Maharaj to Narad Muni. I would not say it's a similar question, it's actually an opposite question. Here Parikshit Maharaj is asking, how come the Lord is partial? And there Yudhishthir Maharaj is asking, how come the Lord is so impartial? Now why is Yudhishthir Maharaj asking this question? I'll give you a background of this. The Rajasuya sacrifice is going on and after this Rajasuya sacrifice, King Yudhishthir is going to be proclaimed as the emperor of the world. So lots of preparations are going on and a lot of kings have come from various different places. And uh, once the ceremony is supposed to begin, they were all wondering who should be offered the first puja which is called the Agri Puja. So then they all decided that maybe Krishna should be offered the first puja. And everything is going very fine. They, are, they have made Krishna sit and they are going to start the program. Meanwhile, Shishupal enters. Now this Shishupal story is a very long one. We all know that how when these four Kumaras, they went to Vaikuntha and they wanted to see Lord Vishnu and they were not allowed to see by Jai and Vijay and they ultimately cursed Jai and Vijay. And when they cursed Jai and Vijay, then Jai and Vijay had to be born as Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, Ravan, Kumbhakarna, Dantavakra and Shishupala. 
So when he was born, when this Jai and Vijay, they were born as Shishupal and Dantavakra, from very beginning they were very offensive towards Lord. When Shishupal was born, he was born with four hands and three eyes. So this was something very weird. So when Shishupal was born, his mother was uh, very taken aback. Is he a demon or something? How come he's born like this? And Shishupal's mother, the queen of Chedi, is the sister of Vasudev, father of Krishna. So they are related, they are relative, they are cousin brothers. So when she was afraid and she took Shishupal in the lab, she was wondering how come he looks like this? And then the celestial voice comes out from the sky and says, don't worry, your son is a very virtuous one and his death will be glorified. So now imagine the child is born and the first thing the parents are told that his death is going to be glorified. But they want to know by engineer banega ki doctor banega. They don't want to know how he's going to die. They say he'll have a, why did they say glorified? Because he's going to get moksha and we all know the story. So then immediately his mother asked, so who is the person who's going to kill him? When you're talking about his death, at least tell us who is going to kill him. And they said, the voice from the celestial sky said, on whoever's lap, Shishupal will shed off his extra hands and the extra eye, he will be the killer. So then what they started doing, the king of Chedi, he started inviting everybody. And he started putting Shishupal in everybody's lap to check out what happens, but nothing happened. And finally Krishna, he was just a young boy, he's a relative, he's a cousin brother. It's a family get together and when he walks in and then they have him, Shishupal put on his lap and then you see that the two extra hands of Shishupal are off and the eye disappears. So then the queen of Chedi, Shishupal's mother, Krishna's aunt, she starts crying. Oh, I know, the cousin brother is going to kill my son. Krishna is going to kill my son. So that day in the night, she goes to Krishna's room and she starts crying. So then Krishna gets up and is like, Auntie, why are you crying? So he says, I know that you're going to kill my son. So then he says, well, I'm not the person who writes everybody's future. So I, I, there's, there's no role of mine. What can I do about it? And then she said, is there not anything that you can do about it? So then he says, well, okay, I can do something. Okay, Auntie, I can do one thing. I will forgive him a hundred times for the mistakes he makes, but 101, I'll kill him. So he also makes it a point to mention that these 100 mistakes will be big mistakes, not a small mistake that he broke my pencil box or something. Every mistake is worth that he can be killed for that mistake, that big mistakes. I will forgive 100 mistakes and 101, I'll kill him. So Shishupal was also very careful. He was very envious of Krishna. See, enviousness is a, is a quality that every human being has. And this enviousness is more so exhibited among the cousins and near relatives. See, you are not envious of Narendra Modi. Are you envious of Narendra Modi? You can't. Are you envious of your next door neighbor? Yeah, yeah it's possible. Yeah, so that enviousness is more in a close circle. So it was very natural for Shishupal to be envious of Krishna because they are cousin brothers and everybody is always glorifying Krishna. Krishna is so great, Krishna is so grand. So he was envious of Krishna. But he was also very careful that I won't make hundred mistakes. So whenever he used to get very angry, he used to burst out, but most of the time he was careful. But this day, when this Rajasuya sacrifice is going on, Shishupal is already very tired because he came from a long journey He's all vexed up, tired, and then he enters. And then he sees, wow, Krishna is sitting on a big chariot and everybody is worshipping him. And as soon as he sees Krishna, he remembers one incident which is so painful to him, is that Krishna kidnapped Rukmini. Sishupal wanted to marry Rukmini. He had given his heart to Rukmini. And Krishna, right in front of Shishupal, had kidnapped Rukmini. We all know this story. So whenever he sees Krishna, he remembers that. So he was so when he saw Krishna, first of all, he's tired and he was, see, it says in Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, 62, 63 slokas, that how, when one is overcome with lust and desire, anger comes up. And with anger, one loses one's intelligence, right? What is that slo sloka? Dayato vishya pungsha 
संगस्ते सोप जायते संगा संजायते कामा कामा क्रोधो भी जायते क्रोधात् भवति सम्मोहा सम्मोहा स्मृति विभ्रमा स्मृति भ्रमा बुद्धि नाशा बुद्धि नाशा प्रनिष्ठ How does anger come? First of all, you meditate on a particular object, and you get attached to that object. You want that object. You lust after that object. Finally, you ended up not getting that object. And then you get anger because anger comes from lust. And once anger comes, the anger sits on your head, and then buddhi nasha, it, your intelligence goes. What happened to Shishupal? He was very intelligent, very careful. He never made many mistakes. He never. He didn't want to get killed by Krishna. But what happened? Kama krodo, kama. He was lusting for Rukmini. That was not satisfied, so he got anger, and so much anger that he lost his intelligence. Krishna was warning him, "Hey, Sishupal, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Stop now! I'll kill you once you cross hundred." And he says, "Go ahead, go on counting. One, not one, two, three. I don't care." He was so upset. And then finally, we all know how. Krishna put his Sudarshan chakra, and Sushupal's head was chopped off then and there. Now imagine there is a big festival going on, and everybody is in a happy mood, and then there is a dead body lying there. And more so ever, Yudhishthira Maharaj is supposed to be more more upset because it's his function. You know, it's imagine it's your birthday party, and there's some fighting going on. Definitely, you're not going to enjoy it because you want all attention on you. You should be the center of attraction. But then you see here in Yudhishthira Maharaj's. Behavior. He's not upset. In fact, he's confused. Why he's confused? Because what he saw when Sishupal got killed, Sishupal's soul merged inside the body of the Lord. So Yudhishthir thought, how can that be possible? He's a sinful person. How can he get mukti? Somebody is a devotee. He gets mukti. Is fine. He's a sinful person. So he immediately asked Narad Muni. What is this going on? I'm confused. How can Lord be so impartial? For devotees also He will give mukti, and for demons also He will give mukti. Wow, that's too much. So then Narad Muni goes explaining, yes, Lord is impartial, and then he tells this sloka that Lord is so kind, He's so merciful that even if somebody remembers the Lord with enviousness, He will give them moksha. Even if somebody remembers Lord with fear, He'll give them moksha. Even if somebody remembers Lord with lusty desires, he'll get moksha. Even if somebody remembers the Lord with a loving mood, devotional service, he'll give them moksha. This is a big statement. This is a big statement. Catch, catch a secret point underlying it. I'll repeat. Even if somebody is envious of Krishna, he will get mukti. You know what's the? Secret point lying here: envious of Krishna. Do we all have envy inside? Yes or no? Yes. So, are you envious of Krishna? Yes or no? You can't get moksha <laughs> because you are envious of Krishna's devotees. Envious of Krishna. Hate Krishna. Love Krishna, fear from Krishna, enviousness from Krishna, from Krishna. That's important. You got my point? From Krishna only. No, I, I will also try to be envious of Krishna now. But the problem is, even if you try to be envious of Krishna, along with being envious of Krishna, you are also envious of others. That's the problem. Here, he's a monopoly god. He's saying, want to be envious only of me. Want to be angry only on me. Want to love only me, only me. See, Krishna is the only me God. He says only me. So here, Shishupal, he was not envious of anybody else. He was envious only of Krishna. See, the whole point here is not the mood. The whole point here here is in that particular mood. What are you doing? Remembering Krishna. That's the whole point. Remember Krishna. Jeno teno prakarena. By whatever way, just remember him. That is important. Do whatever you want to do. Remember him all the time. Always remember Krishna. Never forget Krishna. Even if you are envious, if you always remember him, then you can get moksha. Huh? Why? Why is it like that? 
even if somebody see yudhishthira maharaj is asking this to narad muni he says you can read this previous uh, verses but he says how come sishupal didn't get leprosy he supposed to get white leprosy he supposed to become sick somebody offending krishna so badly somebody speaking so badly about the supreme personality of god it and he'll simply walk so nice and fine fit and fine how can that happen why didn't he die of some disease because he was always remembering krishna and remembrance of krishna itself is so purifying imagine so i'll give you a very simple example remembering krishna or the name of krishna is like a touchstone what does a touchstone do a touchstone touches the iron the iron becomes gold the touchstone touches anything it becomes gold so anything touched by krishna becomes krishna so even if your envious heart has touched krishna then it purifies with anger you have touched krishna then purify with your lusty desires you touched krishna purify you have to touch krishna he is a touchstone he will purify you but only krishna only krishna that's the main line here we have to remember krishna all the time 24 hours one particular devotee was telling the other day that mata ji is it okay if we worship krishna forgetting krishna's blessings to become a good devotee but as far as our small small material desires are concerned can we worship demigods you know we want something beta chahiye visa chahiye paisa chahiye ye chahiye can we worship demigods so i was asking him like why do you want to do that why can't you worship krishna for that he said why to disturb krishna for small small things why to disturb krishna will give us uh, you know pure love small small things we can ask demigods so i was telling him it is something like you know there was a man sitting on a horse while well, sitting on a horse he was carrying a big luggage on his head and somebody asked him why are you doing that and he said you know jeeva daya jeeva daya already i am putting so much of my weight on the horse you know i am not so cruel to put again my luggage also on the horse that's why i'm putting it on my head now that's foolish now, already i am asking so many things to krishna again my small small things no ask everything to krishna akama if you have no desire sarva kama you have many desires ask krishna no desires small desires big desires ask krishna some devotees are very intelligent they know the philosophy they say no no mata ji if we ask krishna krishna will purify our desire we want to ask him something he'll purify then how will enjoy right it's a valid question i want some materialistic thing i'll go to krishna but i know if we ask krishna he'll purify that desire only then how to enjoy is is it not a big problem with krishna he will purify the desire krishna does purify the desire Yeah. you see whoever has gone to the demigods when they go with a desire they are not purified they try to fulfill the desire but they are not purified but devotees even if they go with lots of desires to krishna ultimately they are purified you see dhruva maharaj he it's not that he was a very pure devotee he didn't go for doing tapasya to see the lord he wanted kingdom he went with desire na but what happened when ultimately vishnu came in front of dhruva maharaj then dhruva maharaj said i don't want anything desire is purified he said i came here looking for glass but i got diamond i don't want to ask anything kardama muni he wanted to get married he asked krishna give me a good wife who will help me in my spiritual life so it's not that if i want a good wife or if i want money or if i want this i can't ask krishna you can ask krishna you can ask krishna whatever you want you ask krishna because he will purify it you won't need it anymore you won't want it anymore he'll give you the right thing you see hiranyakashipu he did big tapasya i think in the whole history nobody can do a tapasya like him he was standing on one leg on the what is that mandrachal parvat he was standing there and he did tapasya for so many years and finally brahma came so though he did austerity though he did tapasya what happened finally he asked boon from brahma and finally 
what happened to his desires they remained as it is no purification what hiranyakashipu wanted to do he wanted to kill prahlad he himself wanted to be god no purification in desire though did so much tapasya same thing you see in the case of ravan he was a devotee of lord shiva and he did so many austerities he gave off all his head in sacrifice and he did so much austerity but was his desire purified no he wanted to kidnap lord's wife he kidnapped sita devi he kidnapped lakshmi devi desire is not purified you see the case of um, kamsa he was a devotee of durga devi but what did kamsa do at the end though he was a devotee of durga devi what he did he wanted to kill the supreme lord his desire is purified no as it is so though they are doing austerities though they are doing tapasya but the desires are not getting purified and in we see in the case of dhruva mara the desire got purified so when we ask something from the lord the desire gets purified so if we are not asking something from the lord and if we are worshiping devi devtas if we are worshiping demigods for our desires then we are also little hiranyakashipus we are small hiranyakashipus when we go to some other sources why krishna is our supreme lord if i want something i'll ask him if i don't want whatever it is it is him that is called complete surrender tvameva mata cha pita tvameva tvameva bandhu na sakha tvameva tameva vidya dravinam tameva tvameva sharanam mama deva deva we used to we used to recite this in our school it was our school prayer beautiful do you understand the meaning of this say tvameva mata you are mother you are father you are guru you are knowledge you are wealth you are everything so that kind of relationship we have to have with krishna when you have the relationship with krishna you can be angry on him you can be upset with him the whole point is with him only he should be your only valentine no other valentines only valentine so that's the beauty of this shloka that's why i took it today on this so called valentines day that love only krishna and krishna is so kind no matter whatever way you approach him he will purify you he will purify you i remember reading about one devotee from brazil he didn't know anything about gita see his father brought home a gita so this is an indian book and it has all sanskrit shlokas so he thought in his mind that you know why not i tattoo a shloka of gita it will be very cool i'll have something written on sanskrit and my friends won't be able to read it and i'll tell them you know this is a sacred text from india and i look so cool fine cool dude so he said which shloka you know so he asked his father which shloka shall i tattoo so his father said i don't know i just purchased the book you know then he said i don't want to tattoo just about any shloka i will take the best shloka from gita so he started reading the whole gita he ended up reading all the 700 shlokas to understand which is the best shloka and you all know what must be the rest of the story krishna tattooed his heart with love krishna tattooed his heart with love he became a devotee of krishna so we, you just need to approach him no matter what's in your mind but approach only him that's the whole point he is very lenient see if you see even in the case of putana putana didn't come to krishna with loving affection oh my i'm going to feed my lord no she wanted to poison krishna she wanted to kill krishna but still because she came with her mind completely focused on krishna and except krishna she was not thinking anything else everywhere she was going she was searching for krishna where is that blue boy where is that blue boy with big eyes he's like this i've heard about him i want that boy i want to feed poison to that boy and what happened krishna not only gave her salvation krishna also gave her a position of datri in the goloka vrindavan so krishna is a very lenient god but the point is we are not approaching him completely we are not taking complete shelter of krishna so here in this shloka he says many many persons have attained liberation simply by thinking of krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities 
now you may say it's very nice to hear mata ji but it's so difficult to 100% think about krishna i'm trying but sometimes it's not possible yeah that is what we want we nobody can be perfect we should try whether we like it or we don't like it we should make this a goal of our life that i have to continuously think about krishna in some or the other way in fact nowadays there is it's become easy than the previous days previous days if you want to know about the lord you have to go to the forest find some saintly person he'll tell you some nice scriptures and stories and then you put them in your mind that is also shruti you know you can't record them somewhere you just record it in your mind and then you repeat it over and over and you do manan of it and that's how you remember krishna but nowadays you have technology you have cell phone you have ample of ways to think about krishna but the thing is we misuse this technologies in different direction if we dovetail them in using them to increase improve our krishna consciousness they are a big boon right so whether we like it or we don't like it we should do it we should go on thinking about krishna in various ways maybe by shravanam kirtanam uh, by taking sadhu sangha by chanting by reciting bhajans hmm? see our own children you know if you ask them to study or if you ask them they they will say it's very difficult let's say some child will say maths is very difficult i can't do it so you don't tell the child oh maths is difficult acha beta mat dena maths exam chhod do do you do that ah uh, kuch nahi go for tuition come on 6 to 8 why maths is difficult you go for tuition whether you like it or don't like it after 5 6 10 years what happens the child is engineer somewhere signing big big checks and he's sitting in some big office room but whose endeavor was all if you would have told at that time acha beta pasand nahi hai to chhod do then it wouldn't have happened whether he liked it or he didn't like it he took tuitions and he studied so whether you like it or you don't like it you do it you do it you be in krishna consciousness then you start liking it it's a gradual process the child eats seralak right the child takes seralak seralak is see the child first starts with mother's milk the child doesn't want to take anything else and the mother forces forces for a seralak and then afterward the mother starts feeding some chapati and rice the child doesn't want to eat you see all the time the mothers are struggling behind the child to feed him with uh, chapati or rice but the child is like no 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 but the mother still goes on no mother says theek hai beta fir tum pura jeevan seralak khao koi baat nahi beta no the mother knows how can that be possible it's not good for he either likes it or doesn't like he has to eat it and when the son gets elder he eats it right today if we give mr prasad you want to take some seralak i know i want to take seralak i can why but but you were when when your mother was feeding you you were not interested in rice but now you can't live without rice so that same thing happens in beginning maybe krishna consciousness is like those i don't want to take it but then you like it or you don't like it once you take it then you start liking it and then you can't live without it now no, now nobody in andhra pradesh can be without rice eh huh? they want rice sambar rasam rice should be there see over the time you start developing good qualities all the anartha has disappeared and you start becoming good devotee and everything is very clear see a magnet you know where there is a magnet and you you take a coin towards the magnet if the magnet is right there on that stand it won't attract the coin will it attract the coin no i will have to get up from my seat and i have to go and see that the coin goes next to the magnet but once i put it in a close proximity the magnet is going to push it after that is very difficult to remove the coin same thing happens to us initially it is like very difficult uh, leaving t20 and come to sunday program uh, is so difficult I put the remote and leave it oh no but then when you come here do you do you remember no chance once we are inside then because now the magnet catches you right and once the magnet catches you and you stay on for a long time next to the magnet slowly the coin also develops the quality of magnet now what will happen when you put a second coin next to that coin it's going to attract the coin is not a magnet remember that magnet is magnet the coin is not magnet but because of his association with magnet it takes on the qualities of magnet and now it starts attracting the other coins towards it so similar thing happens in our krishna consciousness right so when we become krishna conscious when we get attracted to krishna and then we start attracting other people 
towards Krishna consciousness. It's a slow process, but it's a pakka process. It may take time, but we, we shouldn't be losing our faith on it. Whether we like it or we don't like it, we should go ahead. See, Krishna is so lenient, you know. He's, so many options are there. He, he's not even telling that you have to love me only. If you hate me, I don't accept. Saying whatever way, just remember me. Just remember me. And by remembrance of Krishna, because Krishna's name is like Chintamani, it will remove all impurities in us. You remember when I was giving a seminar on Ramayan, I was mentioning about this particular story of Surpankha, how she was attracted towards Lakshman and Ram, right? And she wanted to have them as her husband. And I was telling you that many people say that Surpankha had some magical powers and because of which she could change her ugly form into a beautiful one. But actually that's not true. I was telling you that because she was constantly remembering Ram, she was standing behind a tree and she was constantly looking at the beautiful features of Lord Ram and she was meditating. Oh, how handsome. Oh, how beautiful is this prince. From where has he come? Oh, his arms are so so long or his shoulders are so broad or he's so nice he's so beautiful so when she was constantly meditating on lord ram then from an ugly woman she changed into a beautiful girl and then that was when she walked in see when her bhakti was like see i i shouldn't maybe i shouldn't use the word bhakti but when her attraction for the lord was so high that she completely her features changed from an ugly looking woman to a beautiful woman that was when she approached the lord and then then, lord, then the lord said not me go to lakshman and then lakshman said not me go to lord ram and ultimately she got upset and then she took out her knife and she wanted to kill sita and that is when lakshman takes out his knife and he chops off surpankha's nose and, and the moment all these things happen, we see Surpanka comes back in her ugly form. Now why, that, why has that happened? That has happened because she was trying to take away or disturb or harm the Lord's property. Who is the Lord's property here? Sita Devi. Who is the Lord's property in our life? The devotees. Sita Devi is a devotee of the Lord. Radharani is a devotee of the Lord. So in our life, who is the Lord's property that we tend to disturb regularly? Devotees of the Lord. We are envious of them. We try to disturb them. Then what happens? We become ugly like Surpankha. But when we meditate on the Lord, when we appreciate the qualities of the Lord, when we think about the Lord, then we are beautiful again. right? So this is not that she had some kind of a maya we power it's just lord's mercy it's just the power of lord's name so powerful is lord's name so powerful is lord's form very powerful so when somebody meditates on the beautiful form of krishna beautiful form of the lord somebody thinks about the lord then he's purified all his desires are purified so that's a very, very important point made here. And he says that this great attention can be due to lusty desires, or it can be enemical feelings, it can be fear, affection, or devotional service. Who, ha who had affection for Krishna? We can take the examples of Yashoda Mata and Nanda Maharaj. Devotional service, we can take the examples of Pandavas. Lusty desires, we can take the example of Kubja. Kubja, right? She had lusty desires for the Lord. For enemical feelings, there are so many, Agasur, Bakasur, Ravan, so many of them. And then fear, Kamsa, Kamsa was also having so much fear of the Lord. 24 hours he used to think about Krishna only. He was not able to enjoy any of his material opulence. All the time he'll think Krishna will come and he'll kill me. That boy of Vasudev will come, the eighth child of Vasudev will come, he will kill me. And he constantly kept thinking about the Lord. Hmm? See, in the Bhagavad Gita 9th chapter, Krishna says, Ananyas chintayanto maam jejana paryupasate tesham nitya bhiyukta naam yoga kshemyam vahavi. Very clearly he said that. Ananyas chintayanto maam, think about me. Ananyas, nobody else. Monopoly, only me. If you think about me, then I'll take care of you. Whatever you have, I'll protect. Whatever you don't have, I will give. Whatever you lack, I will give. Very clearly Krishna is saying. I keep telling all of you, the person who is a, a creator of this verse, the person who spoke this word, the poet of this poem, we don't believe him. 
right? And we believe LIC people who have stolen this verse from Krishna. It is not their verse. Yoga Kshemyam Vahamyam is a verse from Gita. They have stolen it. But we have complete faith on LIC. We make sure that we pay our premiums on time. But Krishna is saying, what about my premium? This is my sloka. I have created this verse. So what is the premium we pay to Krishna? We chant. We do devotion. Whenever I say chant, some people, they don't like it. Other day somebody was saying, uh, where in Gita is written that we have to chant 16 rounds? Can you show me somewhere? All the time you iskan people, 16 rounds, 16 rounds. It's like becoming a nightmare. 16 rounds, khatam hua ke 16 rounds ho gaya ke where in Gita? Show me where in Gita Krishna told Arjun chant 16 rounds. I said, Krishna did not tell 16 rounds. Krishna's standard is very high. He said, Satatam Kirtayantoma. Continuously think about me. So I told him, fine. You take your choice. Aap high standard mein chala jau. Satatam, hum 16 rounds karenge. Your choice. No, no, no. 16 rounds is achha hai. Are Krishna. Achha hai. It is convenient, Mataji. Both. 16 is a good number. I am fine with it. Satatam Kita, that's the very, Prabhupada is very merciful on us, he's very kind, he told at least 16 rounds you chant. The standard is to think about Krishna always, every minute, every second. Of course some people, they don't want to do anything, neither they want to chant, they want to simply ask, ask and ask. Today when I was coming from Mayapur in the train, my train was late, I came back by 2.33 and on the way, there was one man asking a lot of uh, questions to one of my summer camp student. She could not answer, so she, she said, come, my Guruji is sitting in the next coach, only come, I'll take you, come here. So he came with her. Now I have some questions. So I told him, look, don't waste my time. I have better things to do. For what you are asking these questions? If, if they are going to bring any transformation in your life, then it's fine. I have my rounds to complete. You know, because there are many people who will simply ask for the fun of it, you know. Something like, uh, uh, what's that? You will not even bother whether the person answered or not. It's like, a, you know, some questions are like, they're not meant for answering. Simply you will say. And some questions are for time pass. You don't want any transformation, simply information. And you, otherwise, some questions are simply for checking. Dekhte hai kitna knowledge hai. What, what person answer. That's all. They don't want any transformation in their heart. Simply passing. Anyway, they have nothing to do in the train. Cell phones uh, charge will be over by that time. So Facebook is also not there. Some, something time passed. So I don't know. If you are serious, then I will answer that I don't have time to waste. Then he was asking so many questions. You know. So like that some people, even during Prabhupada's time, you know, there were some people, see, when they see youngsters joining ISKCON, Dur dur tak unka koi vasta nahi hai. They have nothing to do with that boy. They're coming and advising devotees. So young people in ISKCON, why like that in ISKCON all young, young people are joining? It's not good, you know. If like, I'm 55, 60, if my age means it's okay, but so young people, they have whole life to go. And devotee immediately said, you said your age is okay, then why not you join? Ah, I will ask my wife and I'll come back. I'll ask my wife and come back. And then they never come back, you know. I don't know, oh, he is okay, join him. We have no interest in him. We have asked him for the time pass. Why do we do this? I don't want to join. Simply the devotee asks, you said your age is correct. So you join, we'll leave this boy. You come and join. No, no, no. We have to do that. Remember Krishna. That's the whole takeaway from this slogan. Whatever way, remember only Krishna. So now, one question may come in our heart. Wow, so somebody can be envious of Krishna and can get Krishna. Somebody can love Krishna and get Krishna, then why should I love Krishna? Better I be angry on Krishna or better I be enemy of Krishna. So Prabhupada is clarifying it. He says in the purport of the next verse, he says, Kamsa and other enemies of Krishna merge into the existence of Brahman. But why should Krishna's friends and devotees have the same position? Krishna's devotee attain the association of the Lord as his constant companion. So now we can relax. It's not that those who are devotees of Krishna and those who love Krishna in a devotional mood will be treated same way as the enemies of Krishna. The enemies of Krishna will get a different type of moksha. There are different types of moksha. There is sarupya moksha, samipya, salokya, sayuja and sashti. 
Salokya is that you get a mukti where you can stay in the same planet where the Lord is. Samipya is you can be close, associate of the Lord. Sayuja is that you merge inside the Lord. The Sayuja also again is of two types. There is Ishwar Sayuja, there is Brahma Sayuja. You, you merge in the effulgence of the Lord or you merge in the body of the Lord. And then there is Sashti. You get an opulence same like Lord. So there are so many kinds of it. But those who are enemies of devotees, they can't be companions because they are thinking of the Lord with an enemical feeling. So they merge into Brahma and effulgence. So they get Sayujya Mukti. They merge with the Lord. But those who have loved the Lord and rendered devotional service, they will become the servants of the Lord, personal associates of the Lord. They will stay with the Lord in Goloka Vrindavan. And they will participate in different leelas. So as devotees, we don't need to worry that, okay, it was not fair. No, it's quite fair. So now somebody may say that, oh, oh that means is Krishna partial? Because you said, if there are devotees of the Lord, then they get this. If they are not devotees, no. As I explained many times, when there is a fire sacrifice going on, and if you are very far standing somewhere, you don't get the heat. But if you are close, then you get the heat. It all goes on its own accord. It's not that fire is trying to be partial with somebody. The fire is at its place. It doesn't move. The more we come closer, we get heat. The more we go far, we don't get heat. So the more somebody loves the Lord, then he enters into the reams of Goloka Vrindavan and he enjoys with the Lord. But somebody is far from the Lord and some other bhava, then they are taken into some other kind of moksha. Lord is not partial. Now somebody may ask, you said Lord is not partial, but every time in Srimad Bhagavatam, we read that Lord is always fighting from the side of the devatas. Have you ever heard that Lord was fighting from the side of the demon? Did you ever hear that? Did you ever hear Esidas Prabhu? No. The Lord is always on the side of devatas. So is he not partial? Yeah. Why is he not? Then why is he not fighting from the side of the demons? Okay, I'll tell you one very important secret. Maybe we have never heard this before. Lord also fights on the side of the demon. It's only that we can't see him doing that. When there is a war going on, and here are the devtas standing, and here are the demons standing, Lord is also standing next to the demon. It's only that we can't see him. Why? I'll tell you. When you go inside a room, and if there is a wood everywhere. You no, know, wood is a substance which is opaque. It's not transparent. You can't see things through wood, right? So when you go inside a room and if there is wood everywhere, can you see across? You can't see. When you go inside a room, another room, which is having smoke everywhere, can you see something? Or maybe a little bit misty. And then you go inside a room, which has candle lit there, can you see something? Yeah, very clearly, everything. Now this room hasn't changed. The smoke, the wood, and the fire, the material has changed. So similarly, the candle is sattvic, the smoke is rajasic, and the wood is tamasic. So the Lord is standing right next to the demons also. The Lord is standing right next to the devtas also. But because the devtas, there is predominant sattva guna in the devtas, and there is light everywhere, you can clearly see Lord standing there and helping them. But because here they are full of Thomas and Rajas, and there is smoke and wood, you can't see Lord there, but Lord is there. If Lord is not there, how will they fight? Who will give them the strength? Lord is there in everybody's heart, right? Where do you get the strength from? Even if the demons fight, the strength comes from the Lord. So Lord is there on both the sides. Lord is there on both the sides. But because they are on the side of Sattva, very clearly you can see how Lord is functioning or what Lord is doing. But in this side, you can't see. Right? So Lord is there. Lord is not partial. He's always there supporting both the sides. Mm. But the, the sad point is that as devotees, we lack faith in this particular concept. We think that, you know, sometime Lord helps me, but sometime he doesn't. Do you get this feeling? Anybody of you? Raise your hand. Who gets this feeling? That Lord helps me sometimes, but sometimes he's not helping me. Yeah, look, 
here, here. But the point is, even when something bad happens to you, Lord is actually helping you. You're not able to see that He's helping you. Lord is helping you in every situation, every single moment. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't leave your hand. In fact, Lord suffers in His heart more for us than we suffer for ourselves. Because we don't have a higher understanding. We are not able to estimate how the Lord must be feeling. For example, you know, when a child has fever, hmm, the mother takes the child to the doctor. The doctor gives an injection. Now, is the injection painful? Yes or no? Yeah. When the child gets injection, the child cries. Sometimes you see the mother also cries. Because she, now, I'm asking you this question, why does the mother cry? Does she cry because the child has fever? Or is she crying because the injection is too bad for the child? I mean, the pain of the injection is bad for the child. Oh, so fever ho to chalega. Injection darad nahi dena chahiye. That's not intelligent. Not think like that. We should think that even if the injection is painful, my child should get cured of the fever. So that is what the Lord thinks also about us. Sometimes certain situations in our life are very painful. But Lord knows that even if, if he takes this pain, he will get over with the fever. And that's why he allows that to happen with us. Did you get my point? Satya Manan Prabhu, is it clear? You want me to repeat? I'll repeat it. Sometimes when painful things happen to us, it's not that Lord is enjoying, but He knows that if He bears the pain of this injection, His fever will get away. He will get away with His fever. He will be free from fever, which is more important than the pain of injection. That's all right. <laughs> that is all right. The pain of injection is not important. Thank God Lord is not like these mothers. Otherwise, we will be in big problem. We'll have to stay here only. <laughs> no, no. The fever is more important. The child may die. The blood count may go low. Fever is important, not the pain of injection. See, the definition of suffering for us is very different. What is suffering for us? My child couldn't get first rank. He lost with two marks, right? or I couldn't attend a particular program, or I couldn't get a particular contract, or I couldn't earn enough, or I couldn't get a son, or I couldn't... That is suffering for us. Is it not? Yes or no? Or all of you are high about no, no, we think only about birth, death, old age, and disease, Mataji. No, this is suffering for us. We suffer, we are, it's painful. This didn't happen to me, and that didn't happen to me in my life. But as soon as a devotee goes a little higher, then he knows, this is not important. This is not important. What is important is I don't want to take birth again. I want to come out of this cycle of birth, death, old age and disease. Now, for a devotee who goes a little more higher than this, he understands that every time when Krishna is looking at us, He's suffering in his mind, thinking that this particular jiva or this particular soul is away from the privilege or from the enjoyment of being with me and serving me in loving devotional service. That is what Krishna is worried about. He is not worried about your visas or about your money. He is worried that how should I get him back? He's missing on all the fun. My child is missing on all the fun. When he's up there in Goloka Vrindavan, he's thinking everything is so nice here. And my child is missing on all the fun. So he's feeling bad about that. So because of that, and why are we here? Away from him? We are supposed to be there with him in Goloka Vrindavan, enjoying. But we are here. Why we are here? Because we got fever. We are suffering with? Fever, fever of Maya. We are suffering with that fever. So that is why in between he keeps giving some injections, small, small injections, and reminds, he wants us to get cured. If he doesn't give us those injections, we will settle here. We will settle here with our fever. We will adjust. This is very nice, very comforting. 
the Lord reminds. Some, some of the other problems come in life and then we are convinced this is not the place for being permanently happy. Imagine if there is no trouble in your life, you will be well settled here. This is Pakka place. I don't want to go back, right? Who wants to go back? You know, Brihaspati was walking around and Indra was on his elephant, Airavat. And Brihaspati is the guru of the Devatas, right? And uh, out of love and affection, he took out his garland and he gave it to Indra. So Indra, because he was intoxicated, instead of putting that garland as a prasadi, as a uh, gift from Guru, he put it on the head of the elephant, Airavat. And his Guru was very upset that this is an insult. So he said, you go and become a pig. So Indra becomes pig. And then in the body of a pig, he marries a she pig. And they have small little, little piglets. And they're happily eating stool and all the dirt. And after some time, when the devtas see that there's a big problem here because there is no king in the heaven, they all go and request Brihaspati, please take away your curse. We need a king here. The throne is empty. And Brihaspati, you see, the Guru's nature is like that. They get very angry sometimes, but at the same time, they're very soft like a coconut from inside. So they don't take it so seriously. And he said, oh, fine, I, have, I already forgiven him. You can bring him back. That's all right. So then all the devtas go and they tell Indra that you come back. And Indra is like, how can I leave my pigs, you know, my wife and my children? And the devtas are talking, you are the king of heaven. What are you talking about? Let's go back. And he said, can you shut up? There's some man passing stool that's going to be warm and hot. Don't disturb my hot food. Can you just go from here? And they're like, how do we remind him you are the king of heaven? But he's so attached to his she-pig wife and she-piglets and children. Right? So that is the situation. That is our situation. We are supposed to be with Krishna. That's our place. But we forgot. We got so engrossed with our things. And Krishna is constantly sending reminders. Like Brihaspati sent those devtas, Krishna is also constantly sending us reminders in form of guru, in form of devotees in our life, that this is not your life, come back, you know. So this is what Krishna is sad about. He is sad about this. He is not sad about your other problems. He is sad about that you are missing the opportunity to live with him. Krishna is ready to help, but at least we need to indicate that, that we want help. We need to connect to him. Rest he will take care. See, in the aeroplanes, they have something called a black box. I, I don't know why they call it black box, because actually it's orange in color. I don't know why they call it a black box. They have a black box. Now, if anything happens to that particular plane, they can know from the black box what exactly happened. That black box also records the conversation of the pilots, whatever they are talking, and just about inside, outside, everything. Now, when a crisis happens, and this aeroplane goes and falls somewhere, let's say inside water or some on top of some hill, because of this black box signals, they can find out where exactly is the plane and then they can go and rescue. Now similarly, in our hearts also, there is a black box. And this black box can transmit signals to Krishna. Krishna, come and help me. But the problem is that we have switched it off. And imagine we are in this huge Bhavasagar, this whole big metalist ocean with lakhs and crores of jivas and we are drowning inside. But we have not even switched it on. If we switch on, he will come and help. He will come, he will, he will find out the signal. This particular black boss is connected, the jiva is calling me. But we, are, we have switched it off. We need to switch it on. Then he will help, he will come. Wherever he is, he will come. He will take the signals and come to us. So how do we switch it on? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Already switch is on. But the thing is, the switch is, you know, when you, sometimes when you go to an old guest house, the 
you know, they don't have those Lee Grand switches, right? They have normal switches and sometimes the switches are so bad that, you know, you put, put the switch, the tube light is on, but the moment you remove your finger, the tube light is off. You need to constantly put the switch on, you know, then only the tube, you know, that old kind of... So, if we want to open our black box and connect it to Krishna, we'll have to keep our finger right on the switch. Not one time, it has to be continuous, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. So don't switch it off once you are out of this place. Keep it on. That is what is Satatam Keta Yentoma. Continuously keep the signals on and Krishna will help you. Not only keeping our signals on, we also need to help others. You know, when you fly in the aeroplane, the air hostess tells you the whole story before you start. Pehle aap apni sahayta karo baad mein, paas mein baithe wale yatri ki bhi madad karo. So, hamara to on karna hi hai. Uske baad, the person next to us. We have to help him also. So, how do we help him? We, we, we take a book and go to him and tell him, excuse me, your black box is off. You take this and you can on it, you know. Excuse me, can you donate for our temple? You can put on your black box. You can put it on, you know. Can you come for our program? Can you chant? And that way we can help them. And when we help others, I'll tell you the secret also. When we help others to put their black box on, then the signals of our black box become very strong. Very strong. No weak signals. No Airtel, BSNL. It's a super Vaikuntha plus. Complete clear signals will come. But we need to help others, then it works more faster. Preaching. Uh, many of them are very reluctant. And some of the devotees are very proud about it also. They come and tell me, I donation de sakta hum, lekin kisi aur ko mangne mein mujhe sharam aata. What? For what? As if it's very great thing. I have never asked anyone to You useless fellow. You are taking sun from Krishna every day, water from Krishna, and I have never asked anyone So proud about what? What? Amrish Maharaj was the king of the whole three worlds. He was not having that much ego, as much ego you have of your two-bedroom flat. That also in Vishakhapatnam, not in New York downtown. And you are so proud about it. I know, I have never asked anybody, you see, I can't bend. Useless, useless, no. When we preach, when we inspire others, when we motivate others, we are the ones who get benefited the most. I remember, as a child, when we used to have our marriages in our family, because I was a young girl, the only seva, the only duty they used to give me is, you stand near the door, you know, wear all those lachas and decorate yourself nicely. Stand near the door and, you know, they used to have a small steel ka sprinkler. They have rose water in it and you just sprinkle, on the, you know, sprinkle them on the guests. That was the only thing I used to get. I was maybe class four or five and stand near the door and, you know, the people get inside the Kalyan Mandapam and you sprinkle it. I made an observation. When you sprinkle that rose water on others, 80% of it gets sprinkled back on you. Is it not? 80% of it comes back on you. When you sprinkle, it comes back on you too. And by the end, when I keep on doing it, by the end the guests are in, I'm myself smelling so nice of all that rose water. Did you have that experience anytime? This is what happens when we do preaching. When we preach to others, by the end of the preaching, we ourselves become so nice smelling. We ourselves become so good devotees. And that happens only by preaching. If you want to keep it to yourself, then you're not benefited. When you share it with others, then you're immensely benefited. We went for this um, <clears throat> Mayapur Yatra. So, um, see, I've been preaching, I've been doing, but there are times when I also feel a little low. So. We went for this Mayapu Yatra and uh, we took all very new people into Krishna consciousness and 
they, were, they started chanting and everything. So I was taking them and I told them, come for Mangalarti tomorrow and this is what happens. I was explaining everything. I got a little envious of my husband. I said, he's so free, happily moving around whatever he wants to do. I'm stuck with these people here, you know, and I need to take care of them. So I was a little, little envy in my heart that, oh my, why am I put in this situation every time? I just want to be on my own. I, I want certain things to know. I, maybe I want to sit near Narasimha for some time or I just want to do something. And then uh, I find, anyway, that's that. So next day morning, when we all went for Mangalarati, and all these new people whom I had taken with me, they were all, they don't know anything. So they were simply sticking to me wherever I was standing. So they came and they stood next to me and they were very obedient, told them to be there by four. They were there by 3.15 itself and they were all ready. And when the Mangalarati started and the shank blew and now imagine they're all very new people. They don't know much about, they're new. They just started chanting, very new in Krishna consciousness. And then you, uh, when the shanka was blown and the aarti started and all these new people, I saw them spontaneously, they raised their hands and they were swinging their bodies and they were also chanting behind the mantra. That made me so ecstatic. I felt so happy. And that is something which you, it can't be expressed in words. You feel so happy because you feel like, okay, they, they didn't knew nothing and now here they are raising their hands. So you feel like, job done. Now they will pass on to others, you know. So now they became Christian. And at the end of it, after this one in, I mean, I could say three-fourth day at Mayapur and half day at Puri, you could have seen their faces were glowing. They were so happy and they were like, we don't want to go back to Vishakhapatnam. Can we stay here forever and ever? And they all took mala bags and they all promised to chant. And they all came to me, those kanti's, please put it on us, please put it on us. We never eat onion garlic again. We will never take this again. So then I thought that, you know, sometimes you do feel, but I think this is the most beautiful thing. Many times I've attended Mangalarti in Mayapur, but whenever I take Yatra with me and when I see those devotees happy and blissful, that Mangalarti becomes 100 times more blissful for me and I experience it. It's something so nice. It's not something you can express in words. So I think preaching, preaching is the essence. Just because you are Krishna conscious, you are doing your sadhana properly, you are doing your chanting, that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. That is the beginning of the story. You need to bring others into Krishna consciousness. You, know, you need to bring them. That will give you some other world experience, some different kind of experience. Right? So anyway, coming back to our topic for today is that remembering Krishna 24 hours. Remember Krishna. Always think of Krishna, never forget Krishna. So, Jeno Teno Prakarina, we should schedule our life in such a way that we don't forget Krishna. We have complete faith on Krishna. And see, that's the essence of our movement. In the morning, Mangalaharti, what do we chant? Shikshashtakam. And what's the last words we say? Aslisya va padaratam pinastuma madarshinam marmahatam karotuva yatha tatha va vidha tilampato matprana nathasu sayeva napar. Oh my Lord, no matter however you treat me, I will always be under your shelter. I always be under your shelter. Even if, in, even if you give me affection or even if you give me up or you don't look at me or you become indifferent to me, but I'll always keep you in my heart. So we have to have that feeling and you should have complete faith in Krishna and try to remember him. And that is possible only when we remove the unnecessary things and people and circumstances and situations in our life which we are going through and make place for Krishna. Try to see that whatever the unimportant things which we are doing, where we are wasting our time and try to accommodate Krishna more and remove those things out from our life. Like I always put it in my lectures, I tell you that all those relatives who are not Krishna conscious, put a surname to them. What is that surname? You all know now. Time waste. Time waste. Mr. Sharma, time waste. Mr. Gupta, time waste. So whenever that person calls, you immediately know time waste. I'm wasting my time. I, I'm, I'm not here for gossip. Time is very less. I need to remember Krishna all the time. I to chant Krishna's name, take shelter of Guru. Anybody has any questions, any comments? Yes. Hmm. 
Yeah, so he has a very good question. He's asking that when we are in association of devotees, we don't degrade. But then when we were in association of Lord, then how we degrade? So here, the answer is that it's possible that in the association of Lord, one may degrade. Now, having said so, I'm not trying to put the Lord's position down, but what I'm trying to say is that the Lord is very kind. The Lord is too kind. So what he does is that when he sees that your mind is diverted, when he sees that your mind is not with him and with something else, just like a doting father, he allows you to do it. He says, fine, you want to look at that thing? You don't want this, you want this? He'll give that to you. But devotees are more like parents. Even if you want it, they give you one slap. No, you're not going to have it, you're going to have this because that's good for you. Because Lord is too merciful. So he can't say no. Like for example, like I keep telling that when somebody gets a birth of a tiger, let's say from a human body, so it's because he's prone to eating meat. So it's not that Lord is punishing, but Lord is too kind. He says, you like to eat meat? So why do you have to go to a whole trouble of cutting, cleaning, frying and all? You just take it directly. Or some people are used to exposing their bodies. The Lord says, you want to expose your body? and have become a tree. Why to take all the trouble of buying the cloth and then cutting it into pieces? Simply you can stand naked like a tree. So he's very kind. So he, But then devotees, that is why you see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, whether it is Prahlad Maharaj, whether it is Dhruva Maharaj, whenever they come in right in front of the Lord, the only thing they ask Lord is association of devotees. Why aren't they asking Lord that I want association of you? Yeah, because Krishna, like Chanchal, he will see me go off here and there. But devotees will train us to be into... Krishna consciousness. That is why you see in the Ramanujacharya Sampradaya temples, they don't allow you to stand in front of the deity for a long time, right? You have to come in a line and then when you are there in front of the deity, you're there only for a minute and then immediately you are out. That, that's a whole concept behind it because we may make an aparad. Because sometimes, even if we are in front of the Lord, we may think of something else. That is what happens. Usually you are in front of the Lord, but you are actually thinking about that particular lady, what sari she wore, what happened to this person, why he is looking like that. You make aparad. Aparad is not only Vaishnava aparad. There are Guru aparad, there is Seva aparad, there is Vigraha aparad. There are so many kinds of aparad. So when you go and stand in front of the deity, but you are not thinking about deity, you are making great aparad. So to avoid this, they have this line system. So that you are in line, line, line and you are already done with your gossip and you are already bored. Now you have nothing to do except seeing the Lord. And that also they will push you in one minute. So you won't waste your time. You will immediately tell your list, ye chai, ye chai, ye chai, ye chai, push. No aparad, finish. That is why you do that. So some, it's possible sometimes that when you are in association of the Lord, you know, you may not be, you, you know, the Lord comes and goes, but devotees, they will, they will uh, teach us how to be serious in Krishna consciousness. See, Lord is so sweet. Somebody comes with poison also, he will say, Amma, Mother. He doesn't, he's not trying to change anybody or not trying to improve anybody. But devotees are very pakka. If you are sleeping in Japa, if you are not okay, the devotees will tell you, Prabhu, you are sleeping. It's not correct what you are doing. But Krishna won't say that. That is why they are asking the association of devotees. Association of devotees. And in association of devotees, you can remember Krishna. Because what will the devotee do? Bodhayanti parasparam. He will go on speaking about Krishna only. Whenever in association devotee, ghoom firke, ghoom firke, he'll come to Krishna only. Whatever, no matter what you talk to a devotee. You talk about nature, you talk about beauty, talk about mountains, hills. Oh, Krishna made them so beautiful. This is so nice. Krishna's arrangement. If he sees some intelligent person, he'll think, ah, he's so intelligent. Krishna gave him this intelligence. So, he will go on coming back to Krishna, no matter what point you make with him. So, that way you will be in constant meditation of Krishna. That's why the association of devotees is very important. Other point is that Krishna will go according to rules for giving you whatever you deserve or you're supposed to get. But when a devotee intervenes, then all the rules are out of the window. Now sometimes you may not be deserving to get a particular thing, but when a particular Vaishnava recommends it for you, Krishna can't say no. So he will immediately accept it. And that's the proper channel. Why we are asking the association of devotees? Because it says, you know, Ashre kariye je bhaje tahe Krishna nahi taje. Whoever takes shelter of the devotee and worship Krishna says, I won't leave him. I will all, we have to take an ashray. You have to be in the association of devotees. Then only Krishna accepts you. That is the right way. See, that's our sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, dasa anu, dasa anu, dasa anu, dasa anu, dasa anu, dasa. That is how we go. And even in the spiritual world where there is Radha and Krishna, 
to tell you, I mean, to put it straightforwardly to you, we won't worship them directly even when we go to Goloka Vrindavan. We won't be doing it. When we go there also, there are Sakis, there are prominent Sakis, then there are Manjaris. There are so many divisions and we may be somewhere down there on the line. But it's not that having heard that you feel disappointed about it because there everybody enjoys us at every level. So, I mean, of course the time is over but there are so many beautiful Leelas in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I mean, emphasizing on this point that how one's supposed to go through only Guru. Because in the spiritual world also, that is your position. You will be doing some service and then you hand it over to Guru. And then your Guru hand it over to his Guru and his Guru. And then finally it goes to Lalita or Vishaka. They go it to Radharani and then Radharani gives to Krishna. That is how it goes. So better we get trained right now how to do it before we actually go there, right? See, a mother trains the daughter. You're going to go to mother-in-law's house, you learn this, you learn that, you learn cooking. Otherwise, she'll say, Mammi ne kuch nahi sikhaya. No, it's a, that's a patent dialogue. Same thing will happen. If we don't learn how to serve Guru and we don't learn how to do things, you go down, how you have to go step by step approaching the Guru and then your Guru. That's how it goes. And that is why you see, Sometimes, very naturally, you are attracted to serve your Guru. It happens, right? Do you feel that? When you see Guru Maharaj, you, you want to serve him. Because you have been doing it. That's your position. You have been serving him. So you are naturally attracted to, to, to render service to him. Now you may say, but well, in my case, I'm not attracted to service, to do service to him. Then what? That may be also happening. I'm not naturally attracted to my Guru. I'm somehow forcing my mind to settle it by Shastra Grant. There is no natural. That also happens. But Prabhupada says that either love marriage or arrange marriage. <laughs> but marriage is, will, has to be done. So then you do it and then it will happen. It will happen. Like I have told you the example of Gargamuri. When everybody was paying obeisances to Prabhupada, he didn't do it. And Prabhupada says, why aren't you doing it? And he says, that time they used to call him Swamiji. Swamiji, I, I don't feel to. He was very frank. Everybody is paying obeisances, but I don't feel to. Then Prabhupada says, you like it or you don't like it, you do it. When you keep on doing it, you like it one day. They said, okay, I'll do it. That's how Prabhupada made them do that, right? So it's not necessary that you may like to do it, but at least you know that's the process. That is how. So as I give the example of all this Sarah like this and that, whether you like it or you don't like it, this is the process. This we know from our Guru. So this is how we have to go with the association of devotees. Association of devotees. Very important. Okay, Ravi, did you do a good job? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we, we need one Hari Bol for Ravi Prabhu. Hari Bol. Thank you. Thank you for the translation. So we'll end the class here. Nitai Gol Parmanande Hari Hari Bol. Sab Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Nage. Sab Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Nage.